Hi, <clears throat> this is Nick Pizai, and this is another in our series of applied math videos for water treatment plant operators. Uh, this is in conjunction with our other series called Basic Math uh, that we use um, for water treatment plant operators being uh, preparing for their exams. Applied math uh, is taking those principles that we learned in basic math and applying them towards an actual present day water treatment plant. And we want to thank once again the Lake County Department of Utilities for letting us use their data from the um, Aquarius water treatment plant in this particular case. And with that, I'm going to go share with you the screen and go through these examples. So this is practical math for water treatment plant operators, series of licensed exam training models for water plant operators based on the Lake County, Ohio water treatment plant. If you recall from the other videos in this series, I'm sharing with you the first two slides, which are some basic conversion factors and tables of information that you need uh, to gain information from in order to do the questions that we're asking for you. So we've done a couple of these videos before and they've been popular, so we're gonna try to do a few more here. This first uh, table here you see is a, con a conversion factor table that goes from standard uh, metric units to US units and back and forth. So it works, for example, this way. If you wanna change kilograms to pounds, you would find kilograms on the left-hand column, the first column. You would see that you would need to multiply the number of kilograms times 2.2046 to give you pounds. If you wanted to go backwards, if you wanted to go pounds to the left to kilograms, you'd multiply by 0.45359. So that's how that table works. You will need a few things in this table to do some of the following examples. The other table that I have here is formulas and constants. You recognize this as a few minor changes from, um, from video to video. I've put some information in here that's a little different from the other ones, stuff that you need. For example, the permanganate solution strength is 0 0.25 pounds per gallon. Put that in there. Specific gravity of solution, you see that there. You see some other formulas. You can refer back to these as you need them. Move this video screen in case it's in your way. I'm not sure how that works on the video. So, so those are the things you need. So those two tables are available to you. And using that above information, pick out the right information and, and uh, answer the following questions about the Aquarius plan. So let's go to number one. And remember, as we go through these, you, if you want to work the problems, um, rather than just listen to the lecture, you can pause the video at any time and work out the math and then start the video again to see if you got the math problem correct. There's gonna be five questions here we're gonna answer. First one is rather easy. I'm gonna go back and uh, get rid of that video, or excuse me, get that up a little bit further. Right. Okay, so number one, when designing the Aquarius raw water station, the engineers built in two screen wells and two pump wells. And you see the volume of each, uh, to provide sufficient head on the raw water pumps and also to provide detention time for the permanganate to work. What is the detention time through them at 15 MGD? So in other words, Aquarius plant has a, a remote raw water station that sits right on Lake Erie. And uh, there's a set of screens in the station. Water comes in from the intake and before the screens, you're able to add potassium permanganate. So there's some volume uh, on each, for each screen well before it goes through the screens where the permanganate can go in. And then after it goes through the screens and the, the heavy materials are screened out, that permanganate gets into the pump wells where it have some time to react while also feeding head on those, those vertical turbine pumps. So they tell you that each is 1,475 square cubic feet for the screen wells and each is 8,222 cubic feet for the pump wells. So you add those together and you get a volume. So we wanna know the detention time if the flow rate through the plant is 15 MGD. And of course, this is the detention time problem which we should recognize by now. And detention time, as we've mentioned before many times, always equals the volume divided by the flow rate. So if you wanted to calculate this, stop the video now. So the way I tacked this was this way. First, I did the volume. I added those two volumes each, the 1,417 and the 8,222 cubic feet each, and converted them to gallons by multiplying by 7.48. And I multiplied by two because there's two sets in parallel. There's the left side and the right side here. So we add them together. And we should come up with about 144,200 gallons. And of course, the flow rate they gave us is 15 MGD. And I wanted to convert that to gallons per minute. So I multiplied it by the fact that there are 694 gallons per minute in every one MGD. No, I don't have one MGD. I've got 15. So I multiply the 15 times 694 
and come up with 10,410 gallons per minute. Now it's a simple matter of plugging in those numbers, the 144,200 gallons divided by the flow rate, and I come up with about 13.8 minutes. Hope you got that correct. We'll move on to question number two, and you're gonna need that value, so we wanna bring that with us. The question number two says, water line bringing the raw water from the, uh, from the raw water station to the water treatment plant, which is about 3,600 feet away, is a 36 inch diameter force main. So at the flow rate in question one that we just calculated, that we just used, what is the total detention time from the screen wells up to the rapid mixers? And then they ask, what is the velocity in that force main in feet per second? So we gotta add the detention time that we've, um, that we've calculated for the raw water station itself to the detention time of a 36 inch diameter force main that's 3,600 feet long. So we gotta do that one first. I'll bring that up and show you that I did the detention time of that force main was 0 0.785 times the diameter squared times the 3600 and I converted that to gallons. Divided it by the flow rate and I come up with 18.3 minutes. Pretty simple. If I add that 18.3 minutes to the 13.8 minutes that I calculated, I come up with about 32 minutes of detention time from the point where the raw water comes into the screen wells all the way up to the rapid mixer. And the reason they've done that, or the reason the operators need to know that is because when they're adding permanganate, they need to know that at the pHs they're at, they typically need 20 to 25 minutes of detention time in order for the permanganate to react. So in order to not have a lot of pink water coming into the water plant, you wanna make sure that you have enough detention time coming along the way. And this, this calculation proves that we have enough time to do that. So the second part of the question though is, what is the velocity in that force main of feet per second? Remember in other videos, we've talked about engineers preferring to design uh, water mains with a velocity of somewhere between one and five feet per second. So let's do this calculation to see if we come in into that ballpark. So in order to calculate the uh, velocity, we gotta use the formula of V equal Q over A. I'm gonna bring that up and show you that the, the first thing I did was take the 15 MGD flow rate and turn change it into cubic feet per second by multiplying by 1.55. You don't know where that number comes from, you need to go back up into those two tables that I gave you that you're supposed to have dug that number out of. So now the, the calculation becomes V equals 23.25 cubic feet per second divided by the square area of a 36 inch water main, which is the 0.785 times three squared. And I come up with 3.29 feet per second, which is right, right in the ballpark what the engineers would like that to be. So let's move on to question number three. Hope you got those so far. You're doing pretty good. Here's question number three. You can let me get that out of the way. That should be all right there. Question number three asks this. What is the percent strength at which the permanganate solution is kept? And that you're gonna to need to go out to the table to get. They give you a, a, a volume or a, a concentration in pounds per gallon. You're gonna to need to convert it to permanganate solution percent. And they ask you, <clears throat> excuse me, how many milliliters per minute of that solution do you need to feed to treat a flow rate of 9.4 MGD with 0 0.45 milligrams per liter KMNO4? So two part question here convert to percent strength, then use that to determine how much you have to feed to get a certain solution strength. Well, here's the first part. Went into the table and I found a solution strength of 0 0.25 pounds per gallon. To convert that to percent, I would take the 0.25 pounds per gallon, multiply that by the fact that in one gallon there are 3.785 liters, and there are 453.6 grams per pound. So the 0.25 pounds per gallon would be 30 grams per liter or 30,000 milligrams per liter. And we know that a 10,000 milligram per liter solution is 1%. Therefore, a 30,000 milligram per liter must be 3% solution. So that's, that's the simple way of calculating that. We should make a note that a 3% solution of permanganate, remember from another video, we multiply that percent by 10 and we'll get 30 milligrams per milliliter. So every milliliter of permanganate that I add to the water, <clears throat> I'm going to be adding 30 milligrams of permanganate. We're going to use that in our second part of our question here. The second question is ask us, how many milliliters per minute of that 30 milligram per liter or 3% solution do I need to feed in order to treat 9.4 MGD with 0 0.45 milligrams per liter? All right, here's the way I did it. I took the 9.4 MGD and multiplied it by 694 because there's that many gallons per minute in one MGD. I come up with a flow rate of 6,525 GPM. I multiply that by 3.785 liters per gallon I'm going to come up with a flow rate of 24,697 liters per minute. So now a 0.45 milligram per liter dose would equal X milliliters per minute times the 30 milligram per liter strength, or 3% strength, 
divided by 24,697 liters per minute. So I got to solve for X. X milliliters per minute is going to be able to 0 0.45, 20, 24,697 divided by 30. And I'm going to come up with about 370 milliliters per minute for manganate solution need, needing to be fed to treat the 9.4 MGD with 0 0.45 milligrams per liter of 4 Hope you did well there. Let's move on to question number four. Question number four says this. What's the resulting strength of the hypochlorite solution at the Aquarius plant? With a 3,000 gallon truckload of 12.2% hypo, specific gravity 1.19, was mixed in with the 4,200 gallons of 14.65% hypo, specific gravity 1.24, that already was there at the plant. And as plant operators, we know this to be true, especially you superintendents, when you order, when you order chemicals in bulk, truckloads, truckload always shows up when you've got some left from the last batch in your tank. You can't just empty the, the, the tank out, tell the truck driver to wait. He's going to pump that stuff in because he's got somewhere else to go. You're going to fill it into your tank of already existing solution, which probably had a different strength. And in this case, that's true. So when you mix two solutions of different strength together, you need to know what the final solution is. Yeah, I know you would probably send this batch off to the lab and ask them to do it for you, but there should always be a check on that. You should always have two different ways of determining final strength of solutions. The laboratory will give you an analysis, but you need to do the math to be able to get the check. So here's the math that we're going to do. The formula for mixing two solutions of different strength is as follows. And this looks a little complicated, but it makes sense once you understand it. The percent strength of the mixed solution is going to equal the pounds of chemical from solution number one plus the pounds of chemical from solution number two divided by the pounds of solution, not the chemical, but the solution itself. The chemical is only part of the solution. You can divide that by the pounds of solution of one and pounds of solution two. Let's go about doing that. Here's the answer to question number four. You know, stop the video now if you want to. If you want to try working that for yourself. The strength of the truck contents was uh, specific gravity 1.19 times 8.34, or 9.92 pounds per gallon. The strength of the material that you already had on site had a specific gravity 1.24. So when I multiply that times 8.34, I get 10.34 pounds per gallon. So I'm going to mix a 9.92 pound per gallon solution with a 10.34 pound per gallon solution. But I'm not gonna do equal volumes of each and that's where it makes it a little bit tricky. The percent strength then would be the 3,000 gallons of 9.9% pounds per gallon solution, which has a specific gravity of, one, uh, of uh, 0.122, plus the 4,200 gallons of 10.34 pounds per gallons, I'm sorry, the percent of 0.122, and this is 4,200 gallons times 10.34 pounds per gallon times 0 0.1465, that's a percent. We divide that all by the gallons of each solution converted to pounds per gallon, and then multiply the, the result in times 100 to get, a, to get the answer. So the percent strength of the mix would be 3,641.7 plus the 6,362.2 divided by the strengths times 100. And I'm going to come up with a percent strength of a mix of 13.56%. So this shows you what you need to do when you get two solutions mixed together of different strengths, how you convert the resultant strength together without having to send it to the lab to get an, a, a true analysis. But you should do both to check one, one on the other. The lab is checking you, you're checking the lab. Okay, question number five. Depends on that question you got in number four. With the resultant hypochlorite solution that you mixed in, in question number four, which is a real life problem for Aquarius. I mean, they mix these solutions together. They need to know what they're working with because they gotta keep, continue to disinfect water. They're not gonna stop just to wait for the lab. How many milliliters per minute must you feed to do 15 MGD flow rate with 3.2 milligrams per liter chlorine? And I did this two ways, one, one in a traditional way and then one as a check. Here's the traditional way. I took the 15 MGD, multiplied it times the 3.2 millig milligrams per liter times 8.34, and I find that I would need to, find, to feed 400 pounds per day of chlorine to treat that water at that flow rate with 3.2 milligrams per liter chlorine. But I don't have chlorine here at the plant, I have hypo, and I have a mixture of that hypo that I just made in the last problem. It turned out to be 13.56 hypo. Well, if you go to AWWA standard B300 in another video that I've shown, you see that, um, a 12% solution would be one pound per gallon. So if you got something higher than that or lower than that, you take that percentage and divide it by 12, and that will give you the resultant strength. So in our case, we divided 13.56 by 12, 
we come up with a solution of 1.13 pounds of chlorine for every gallon of hypo that we add to the water. So if I need to add 400, at 400 pounds per day rate of chlorine, if I don't have chlorine, I've got hypo at 1.13 pounds per gallon, I divide that and I come up with a, a, a need to feed 354 gallons of hypo per day to achieve the 400 pounds per day actual chlorine that I'm feeding to the water. So all I need to do now is convert that 354 gallons of hypo per day to milliliters per minute and I go through the math there, which you can see, converting by uh, the 3,785 and in the 1,440 minutes in a day. And I come up with 930 milliliters per minute, about that rate. So that's what the feed pumps would be set at, 930 milliliters per minute. But I like to do a check on that. So I'm gonna do this another way, which I showed you in another video that we've had. If you wanna to go to uh, the other part of the channel and see that video, it's, it's right there on the implied math. We're gonna take that 13.5, 6% hypo and realize that it's 135.6 milligrams per milliliter of chlorine. As I multiply by the 10, as, as B300 tells me to do. I'm going to take the 15 million gallons per day, convert it to gallons per minute, which I did before, 10,416 gallons per minute. Then in the table, you see a value of converting that that I can use to convert that to gallons liters per second, which is 0 0.0631. And I've done that. And I take that liters per second, which I got a little math mistake there, but you can see that I'm going to multiply by 60. I'm going to get about 39, a little over 39,000 liters per minute treated flow rate. So now I got to solve for X. I'm going to set X uh, being the milliliters per minute of hypo that I need to feed times 135.6 uh, milligrams of chlorine per every milliliter of hypo divided by the flow rate, which I just converted to liters per minute. That's supposed to equal 3.2 milligrams per liter chlorine. Well, how many, the question is how many milliliters per minute do you need to actually accomplish that? Well, solving for X, take the 3.2 times the 39.47, or 37.5 liters per minute, and divide that by uh, the 135.6 milligrams for every milliliter of chlorine that I calculated. And sure enough, I come up with that same 930 uh, milliliters per minute hypo. So it worked out. All right, hopefully you got those done correctly. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, go through the other videos that we've been uploading for your operators, uh, keeping in, in uh, keeping your math skills going because the exams will be coming up this fall and hopefully this will help you out. Stop by soon because we'll be uploading some more videos soon. Thank you. And we'll close out.